Hey folks, welcome to Market Technical Analysis by InTheMoneyStocks.com, your leader in pure technical analysis, avoiding all that Wall Street hype. Today, Monday, April 28th, 2008. As we get into today, I want to discuss a few odds and ends that's going on in this market. Number one, the market was very, very light on the volume side today, even lighter than we've been talking about recently, and that's a majority of that's attributed to the Federal Reserve meeting on Wednesday, well, the rate decision on Wednesday. It's a two-day meeting this week, Tuesday and Wednesday, as they begin to meet tomorrow. And at 2.15 on Wednesday, that's 2.15 p.m. Eastern Time on Wednesday, the Federal Reserve will release their rate decision. The market's widely expecting a 25 basis point cut, but it could be in the range, uh, you know, it's in between 25 and 50 basis points that they're expecting. Now, you guys know our position here in the moneystocks.com. I think it will be a quarter uh, point cut or 25 basis points uh, at the most as you're going to see the dollar gain strength off of this. Now, yes, it could be 50 and the dollar could still gain strength. Now, you may say, well, why if they cut more? Well, because it's all about what they say. You know, I think that they're going to err on the side of caution as we've seen food prices all over the world soar on the U.S. dollar. In addition, I do believe that there's probably foreign pressure now coming in because of the, for, the the all these commodities trading in U.S. dollars and the skyrocketing prices that you will see this. Now, the key here, folks, is going to be what they say, as I said, and we're going to have to start looking at the key of the, the keys in their language. My guess, and in the moneystocks.com, believes that they're going to speak a little more on the harsher side against inflation. They're going to say they're near the end of their rate cuts. They may do another one. That's very possible. But they're going to say that they're near the end of that, of that. And in course, what happens when they say they stop cutting rates or they near the end? The dollar will rally on that statement. What happens when the dollar rallies? Oil and other commodities can fall, including gold. And we'll see if it happens. You know, it's going to be very, very interesting. Um, I'd be shocked if they didn't say that they were near the end, considering rates are already so low. They can only go so much lower until they get to zero. So I think it might be a nice... Uh, Nice, interesting play, and I did mention in the Sunday night chat last night, DUG is a is a two times short oil and gas, and we are watching that very closely, um, and interested in that play. And I'll quickly bring that up for you guys, DUG on the daily chart, and you guys can see how low it is. In fact, it made a nice little move off the lows, retraced today, and I told people last night in the Sunday night chat that you looked for a gap up in oil, in which case the dug would move lower, and sure enough, that's what it did, but it closed higher on the day, and we can look at the intraday chart. You can see initially it sold off, which is what we believed would happen. This was the entry area we were looking at, uh, even a little lower we were hoping for, and nonetheless, you see a nice little move off, a retrace, and a close. So you got a nice little positive close, nothing substantial, and it doesn't mean it can't go lower, but we are beginning to get very, very interested in this DUG play. Uh, it is very risky, obviously, as it is two times short. All right, it's an ETF, two times short oil and gas. Not the commodity oil itself, just the oil and gas stocks. It's important to understand the difference. But you can look at the USO here and look at the uh, daily chart, and you can see it's very, very extended at this stage of the game. It may have a little more upside, but it's getting very close to the end here, guys. Uh, it not, would not shock us to see within a few days to a couple weeks a touch of this 20. Uh, pull back to this 20 moving average in this vicinity. All right, so we'll see. We'll see. It's it's just speculation at this point. It should be not taken as anything more substantial than just speculation, but we'll continue to watch. Now, the market, as I mentioned, was very, very light on the side of volume, and we're going to go to the intraday ES chart to get started as we talk about the markets. And number one here, folks, we want to touch on the market overall, and so let's take a quick look at the market here. You saw the Dow closing down just 20 points, the NASDAQ was up a point and a half, and the S&P was down a point and a half. So as you guys see, it's another pause day in the markets, as the markets have really rallied from lows, and we'll quickly switch to the ES chart on the daily, and you can see the move that it's had, as in the moneystocks.com had called for it. Now we are beginning to feel that this rally has become a little long, winded, and needs a pullback or a fall here. So we are beginning to eye a fall for early May in this market, and we'll continue to update you as we get closer to that. But it does seem like it's getting a little long-winded here, and we will see that. But the reason why I'm not concentrating is I flip back to the intraday chart, and this is the intraday E-mini chart, which basically tracks the overall market on the S&P. Um, you can see here from peak to valley, 
the market was really only in an eight point range on the ES, which considering how much the range has been over the past couple months is a minor, minor move. So there's not a lot to say here, folks. I mean, you can see here, you had a little bit of a W pattern in the markets and you had a nice little W formation, then the little V, which angled for another move up. But then right away, you begin to go into an M pattern. So you had an M here and then the fall, obviously, you get the bounce back up and then we traded sideways into the close. So there's obviously some key patterns in that intraday, but nonetheless, I think at this point we want to focus more on the daily charts and the commodity charts and uh, various stocks. And I'm going to point out a stock today that was just a tremendous performer that we had in the chat room um, as we were actually holding it as a swing trade. So we'll get into that shortly. But in any case, uh, decent day. I'll show you the NASDAQ on the daily. Let's take a look at that. You can see that we're kind of pausing here, all right? And we've been in a nice little move up. You guys know that we had called for that one little last push. We still might have a little more upside. It's very possible. And I'm going to explain this to you guys. The best moves, and this is key because in many situations, people mistake this, all right? So let's use this as an example. We've had a big move up here, right? Now you have a big move up, and we've had light volume, right? Light volume. And let me look at, look at the SPY so we can actually do this a little better on the SPY. Here's the SPY daily. So you had a nice move up. Now look at the volume over here. Extremely light, right? Very, very light. Now there are two ways to handle this. One, as the market tops out, you obviously get some catalyst to cause a big drop. All right, a day where the Nasdaq's down 50 and the Dow's down 250 or 300 and so forth, and that can be the end. But oftentimes the last move in the market is an exhaustion move of power. So we also have to realize that is that it's very possible there's one more day where the NASDAQ jumps 40 points or so and you get that last blast off on heavier volume. And the heavier volume is really what, what it is is well the institutions are unloading into that and the little guy is buying into that. So that's the key thing to remember is that it's very possible there's two, there's two scenarios we're watching here. Both result in a down move. The question is do we kind of just tick up a little bit come this way and then roll over and come down uh, relatively hard at least down in this area in the minimum uh, probably down to the 50 at least my guess but or is there one more push which takes us right into that 200 and then that's completed all right and again the move up the bigger the move up you got to look for the heavy exhaustion move on volume and that would be a signal to us that it's, it's finally exhausted so it's both both scenarios look like we have a little more upside left in this market but ultimately we are going to look for a, a fallback lower. And again, it's going to be interesting to note the oil and gas plays and the other plays. Um, as the dollar strengthens, as the Fed nears the end of its cutting uh, of rates, and that what is what happens once, once the Fed begins to stop the rate cuts, then you may see a bounce in the dollar. What does that mean? Well, it means that in general, when the dollar bounces, gold, oil, and all commodity prices come in a little bit. And it could be setting up nicely for that type of play. What does that mean? Well, it means oil and gas stocks probably come in. Stocks like XOM, uh, which are quite have, have had quite a move up and have even retraced a little bit here. Uh, SLB is another one to watch. Uh, look at that move up. So you can see the power of these moves on these mega cap stocks lately. Halliburton would be another one. And look at that move as well. Just a tre tremendous move up. These may start coming down to the key moving average support lines. Uh, this would obviously be number one support should it break down from this basically sideways pattern it's in. You'd see a move down to this area right here and you can see actually good support right in this line from these points right over here. See the little bottoms all equal this line right here which is now coinciding with the 20 moving average. So that's a good possibility should the commodity oil fall. Uh, as well as all the, uh, some of the other commodities. Now, it also can affect other things like ag stocks. Notice how ag stocks had a big fall again, and we've been calling the top in ag stocks over the past week to two weeks, saying they're way, way overbought. Stocks like POT, down $13 and a half here, $13.58 to be exact, and you can see the gyration here going. You had a good bounce on Friday after a mega fall, but now it's retraced that whole move, reversed the upside move. A lot of people would get faked out here and say, well, this stock just reversed and engulfed this candle, right? Well, that the green one engulfed the red because in a you know if you're looking at it and don't understand how to read candles, yeah, that's what it did. So you, a lot of people jump on board and say, well, this is going higher. No, not really. That's not what it's saying. What it's saying here is when you're buying that close to a top, you can't look for that move. That move is what you want to see on the bottom. Uh, for instance, a candle down here, a candle at the lows 
and you have an engulfing candle, like a big red candle here, and then the engulfing green candle at the low, that's when you're signaling. So you have to understand the differences on the charts and the time and the pattern and the price is so key in analyzing everything that's going on here. So keep a watch on these ag stocks as well. Uh, should the dollar strengthen, ag plays could fall because commodities would fall, which include oil and uh, corn and wheat and all that stuff as well, rice as well. So you can watch for that. Also, solar stocks have a tendency when oil moves lower to fall as well as they move uh, pretty much in pace with oil. Uh, the more the more pricey oil becomes, the better alternative to solar. So more people go to solar should oil come down, and they will come down most likely as well. So keep an eye on that, guys. And overall, I've pretty much explained what we've been looking for in this market and been getting lately. But again, going back to the NASDAQ daily, it's a sizable move that we've been we've had called. Now the question is, how much higher do we go? Maybe up here, maybe on a mega move on that exhaustion move to the 200, but it's close to being over, folks. This isn't the point you want to go long. In fact, you want to probably be taking profits. This is what we're looking to do up here, and we'll be moving out of all our long plays in this vicinity. All right, come join the swing trade alerts. Come join the uh, intraday stock chat, the options alerts. Institutions get on board with the private consulting. We'll talk to you all soon.